I've been doing YouTube for maybe like 10 years. I've been working in content creation for a very long time. I also uh, just professionally work in uh, social media production. So yeah, yeah, that's me. It's amazing. You've got a lot of history, uh, especially like on YouTube. Yeah. So yeah. where did you get started with YouTube? What, what made you say upload the first video? Um, I was a big fan of YouTubers uh, back in maybe 20... 2010 to 2014, those uh, early golden age of YouTube where uh, people like Tyler Oakley, uh, oh, I love Vaughan, Tyler. People, uh, you know, I was really, uh, I was a uh, closeted trans boy in love with not closeted gay boys. And, like, <laughs> um, and I think I lived vicariously through them a little bit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I kind of just wanted to be like them. And so I started making YouTube videos talking about my life um, sporadically and uh, yeah, then I, then I made my, uh, my video that uh, Calvin Guerra reacted to and then Calvin Guerra reacted to it and uh, I left the internet for a few years and then came back with my, uh, with my um, video about him and uh, things kind of just progressed from there and... Yeah. Not yeah. Right. So for context, who was this Calvin person? Yeah, because I'm an old <laughs> head and I'm like, yeah. who the hell is Calvin Guerra? Um, Calvin Guerra is uh, kind of like the trans mask Blair White, if mm. you will, or was. Like, he doesn't make. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go there. Uh, okay. He doesn't, he doesn't make content anymore, but um, basically he made uh, a lot of reaction content. He's a trans guy that. Uh, just, you know, fed into the trans medicalist narrative, um, anti non-binary, uh, anti cringe culture, um, kind of reactionary YouTuber. And, um, I was the exact opposite. I was making, uh, you know, I was making non-binary videos before it was cool when it was cringy <laughs> and when yeah. it was, uh, I had my pink hair and I was, uh, <laughs> no, you were really surgery. a pioneer. I look yeah. back at a some legend. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. No, um, seriously, I, there was a lot of people that I think were afraid to express themselves in the way that you did, especially early yeah, in the transition. Yeah, and you caught a lot of flack for that. Yeah, I think that um, I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. I think that I was just, uh, like I said, a fan of YouTubers. So I was making YouTube videos about my experience. Um, I was big, inspired by Ash Hardell and uh, Milo Stewart. Oh, Ash. Um, I remember Ash. Ash Hardell's great. Love yeah. them so much. They're just now getting back into uh, making YouTube videos again. And <coughs> um, I'm really excited to see where they go with all of that. Um, and, yeah, so I was inspired by queer content creators like that. And I was – I didn't have a, a big following. I, I had a following from Tumblr, actually. Um, <laughs> we missed and, Wait, I thought you were Gen Z. What, Tumblr? Um, I think Did you Tumblr, get like the last cusp I'm a Gen Zillennial, you know, oh, okay. like I'm oh, on the, the cusp, cusp of Gen Z. Yeah. yeah. So you're like 94, 95? Yeah. Uh, 98. 98. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I... I was on Tumblr. I made videos about being queer and non-binary and genderqueer. Um, I came out as gender fluid on the internet, and that brought me to uh, an episode of MTV's True Life. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't find this out in your research? No, I did. I'm just, you know, I have to be wow for the audience, too. You know what I mean? Like, yes. Oh, wow. I know. Yeah. So I guess, too, I can also owe uh, some of my following and some of my history to uh, true life. I'm genderqueer. Uh, mm. that was a very interesting experience. I was 17 years old. Um, what? when, yeah, yeah. when, how MTV was that? Like he's, he's like house. a pioneer for non-binary <laughs> folks. That's why yeah. I wanted him on. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, yeah, at I've the been age of 17 about, though, yeah. like what does that pressure look like? How was that experience for you? You know, especially back then. I yeah. didn't really, again, like I didn't really know what I was doing. I kind of just, um, you know, took, opportunities when they came to me and I just loved like being myself in that way like I loved the idea of being non-binary um I loved uh like gender fuckery I, I didn't I mean I didn't know that word at the time it's but, okay you can cuss um, I like care. cussing here <laughs> but um I did some <laughs> you know, that's what we do here <laughs> uh, we do here but yeah so I did some uh I was really into all that kind of stuff and 
um, making content. And so I actually came out as gender fluid in a YouTube video and then they found me through that. And you know, the reality TV game where they, you know, they take people who don't necessarily like understand the whole gig and they sell you on You're this telling idea. two people that run a jubilee episode. <laughs> i have yeah. no idea what that's like they i've sell, never yeah. been what? in that position what? in my life do you I have mean, any idea what that's like no idea know how it is you know how it is like uh but i loved it i you know i was 17 they told me i could be a star they told me that i was you know helping the community and stuff um and so i signed a bunch of contracts and uh they came to my place Um, but I don't know. I learned a lot. I, you know, it was super fun to be on camera. Uh, but yeah, it really did kind of push me into the spotlight at a pretty early, uh, age and at an early time in my identity as well. Right. Like I had not fully, like, I am not the person that I was when I was 17, you know, um, and so I was I looking back on it is a little cringy to me. Um but also like there's anybody that looks back at 17, <laughs> I look yeah. back at my 17 year old self, um, I'm like, bro. But but y'all can't call me cringy, okay? Bruh. That would be Calvin Garrett territory. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be Calvin Garrett territory. You gotta protect uh 17-year-old Brennan. But I mean I look back at you know, 17-year-old Brennan, and you know, even though I'm like, ugh, I'm so not that person anymore. And now there's this episode, you know, of me talking about identities and queerness and transness before I even knew at all what I was talking about. But, uh, I also love that version of me. I love, I love past me. Like, um, I think that they were so fucking cool and so brave and like just really put it all out on the table for whoever wanted to see. And, uh, I was doing it you know, to talk about my community and my identity. And I was really well positioned. Like I was very privileged. My parents were supportive. Um, you know, I was, I was okay. So I was able to talk about it and be open about it in ways that a lot of people can't. And so, yeah, I really admire that version of me and it, and it brought me here. So 